Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is January 9, 2021, and I have an interesting little video for you here. So recently I was doing some research on something about FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, progressive United States president in the 1930s, ushered in the era of social democracy that was basically lasted from the 1930s through the 1970s in the United States. Uh, There's this thing that I hear progressives and the social democratic left in the United States saying a lot, which is uh, you have to elect an ally and then make them do it. Uh, I hear Kyle Kalinske in my mind saying this a lot, you know, uh, now make me do it. And there is a quote from Franklin Roosevelt that says, quote, I agree with you. I want to do it, meaning progressive change, reform, whatever. I agree with you. I want to do it. Now make me do it. And I will hear social Democrats citing this like it makes sense in some way. It doesn't make any sense. And so I kind of just wanted to do a video about that, how if you elect someone to do something, that's what they ran on, and it's in their you know campaign <laughs> like platform, and, and that's what they said that they believe in, why should you have to make them do it? Like that's you fucking elected them to do it. Like, what do you mean? Make them do it. Like we got you in office, fucking do the thing. That's you literally just said, this is what you believe in and what you want to do. Why aren't you just doing it (laughs) anyway? That's never made an ounce of sense to me. Um, but anyway, in researching this quote, I came across an article from David Sirota from 2009 Yes, it's 11 years old, doesn't matter. Actually, that's kind of the point, showing a little little bit of recent history here. Uh, David Sirota was way up in the Bernie campaign. He's kind of a fixture in the progressive left. He's been a you know, columnist, uh, radio host, etc. And uh, so I found this article called The Make Him Do It Dynamic from March 2nd, 2009 on HuffPost. So David Sirota, actually, who uh, recently came out kind of as a force the vote opponent, not really opponent, but kind of opponent, but et cetera. Um, (laughs) He got into a big uh, spat with Jimmy Dore over the force the vote movement. I mean, if ever there was a make them do it thing, it was force the vote. I mean, that's, that's in the name, force the vote, make them do it, et cetera. And Sirota was coming out with a very complex uh, message, (laughs) Basically, like ridiculing, cutting to shreds what Jimmy Dore, who, of course, you know, another progressive uh, comedian, uh, news show host, columnist, well, not really so much a columnist, but a, uh, you know, vlogger and commentator, uh, was trying to make the squad push Medicare for all by denying uh, Nancy Pelosi the vote for speaker. No, there was no possibility that a Republican would win unless Democrats voted for a Republican, what would happen is just that uh, you have to get a majority and the Republicans don't have a majority in the House. So basically by withholding their votes, enough votes, the uh, vote for Speaker would just go into a do-over loop over and over and over again until, you know, Pelosi relented, uh, agreed to put Medicare for All up for a vote, whether it passed or not is immaterial. And uh, that would be the thing. And then the squad, you know, could go ahead and vote for her, uh, having made that deal, and then used some leverage to, you know, uh, make something happen. Well, uh, you know, like I said, this whole make them do it concept never made any sense to me. Why don't they just do it on their own since ostensibly that's what they believe in and what they ran on and they shouldn't get reelected if you don't do it again. I mean, this is opening up huge cans of worms about electoralism in general. But uh, anyway, so David Sirota was, if not an opponent of Force the Vote, thoroughly complicating it and muddying the waters and not just saying, hey, great idea, but instead ridiculing it as performative and blah, blah, blah. And uh, he ultimately settled on let's ask for a bunch of other stuff too although i really feel like the way that he went about this i i i still am not willing to give him credit as a supporter of force the vote because the way he did it was the most absolutely convoluted way possible and when all of the you know 
uh, left wing of the Democratic Party was coming down on Jimmy Dore for making this demand, he more or less was in the same camp of coming down. So that to me is how I will remember it. Uh, if you have another opinion, let me know in the comments and I'll tell you why you're wrong. Anyway, found this article, the make him do it dynamic. So let's get into the mindset of people who, you know, can do these kinds of mental gymnastics and, and contortions. So here we go. 2009, Tom DeLay, and oh, sorry, for context, keep in mind, Obama had just been elected at this point. We had just come out of eight years of George W. Bush and Dick Cheney, the initiation of the war on terror, the 2008 economic collapse. Uh, things were pretty shitty, and Obama had run on hope and change. That was the slogan, and everybody really wanted some fucking change because things were bad. I mean, the 90s weren't great. But the 90s were kind of the last vestige of any, you know, uh, held over prosperity from the 70s. 80s, of course, you had the beginnings in a serious way of neoliberalism. 90s, Soviet Union fell apart, uh, was destroyed, dismantled, however you want to put that. Globalization, uh, the Bill Clinton as a right wing Democrat working with the Gingrich Congress to, quote, end welfare as we know it. Uh, you know, lots of right wing changes. By the time you get to the th 2000s, you're just hitting bottom. Arguably 2008, we went through the floor. <laughs> Having hit bottom, we went through the bottom. And people were, were really looking to Obama to like fix things. Hence the whole hope and change thing. Uh, did he? No. We have gone through several floors since then. We are now kind of free floating and uh, things are fucking awful. Anyway, back to 2009 and David Sirota. Quote, Tom DeLay was no Franklin Roosevelt on policy, but he understood one of Roosevelt's most important principles, that in order for a movement to be successful, it must bring pressure on presidents and it must use Congress to administer that pressure. And as my new newspaper column this week shows, it is this principle, so self-evidently true throughout our history, comment, not sure about that, that is now being emulated today by progressives. In the last month, we have seen a rat-a-tat of examples of the progressive movement working with its congressional allies to administer a progressive pressure on the new Obama administration, and with some pretty amazing results. We've gotten Obama to drop some of the most odious corporate tax giveaways he originally floated. We've gotten his original infrastructure spending proposals boosted. And now, overall, as CAF's Bernie Horn says, the stimulus bill is shaping up to be pretty damn good. We've gotten Obama to publicly commit to supporting major bankruptcy reforms. We've seen freshman lawmakers like Alan Grayson, Democrat of Florida, use the bully pulpit of a congressional hearing to humiliate the kleptocracy, which in turn pushed Congress to start taking tougher stands against Wall Street, which in turn forced the Obama administration to pledge to administer the bailout with more transparency and oversight. This isn't nirvana. And it's not yet a legislative steamroller with the brutal effectiveness of DeLay's pressure machine. But these are real accomplishments, and this is a real start to a, quote, make him do it dynamic that will be instrumental to achieving real change. The beauty, of course, is that while a conflict-averse Obama may not like being pushed, and really no president likes to be pushed, it politically helps him. As Chris has previously reported, Bill Clinton complained to then-Representative Bernie Sanders that progressives hadn't mustered enough public pressure on his left. I'm sorry, I can't even read that. And that ultimately hurt him. Comment, fucking Bill Clinton ran with triangulation, like he was overtly a right-wing Democrat. Anyway, because he couldn't effectively play off the left. He was forced to choose. Comment, wow, just taking Bill Clinton at face value here. Like, Bill Clinton is complaining that the left didn't do enough. Uh, that It's just astounding. Like, he's openly complaining that he couldn't use the left more for his own political advantage. Wow. Okay. Because he couldn't effectively play off the left. He was forced to choose a oh, poor Bill Clinton. Either he got beat up by remaining in the center, or he had to lurch rightward as conservatives pulled him. And either way, he looked weak. 
poor Bill Clinton. Uh. He literally ran as a right wing Democrat. Willie Horton, all that stuff. That was before he got into office. This is just blaming the victim. This is blaming the left that the Democratic Party, his party, has been silencing, bludgeoning, imprisoning, you name it, for decades. They participated in the Red Scare. They participated in McCarthyism. The only time they complained about McCarthyism is when they themselves got caught up in it. That's it. They were fine with helping Republicans destroy socialists in the 40s and 50s. Fine with it. Okay, continuing. Congressional progressives seemed to have learned the folly of all that and are creating a dynamic whereby Obama can use congressional pressure from the left as a negotiating chip. That is, he can go into legislative negotiate. Anyway, I'm going to stop here. How did this all work out? How did this all work out? This was the beginning of Obama. How did it work out? We got fucked over and 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 over. TARP, the ACA, you name it. There was no recovery. There was no real recovery for people. Eight years later, we got Trump because things were so bad after the Obama years because he didn't fix things. That's what we got. So this entire mindset is wrong. You can't just elect right-wing people and then try to pull them left. This is exactly the exact same fallacy that they pushed with Biden, who not incidentally was Obama's vice president. And they put Biden up because he was way to the right. I mean, to like balance out the ticket. <laughs> and now they're running that guy. So, I mean, I don't think too many of the audience here is falling for the we can push him left thing uh, about Biden. We couldn't even really do it with Obama. I mean, you know, uh, Sirota wrote this article a bit prematurely. It was like six weeks into Obama's uh, term or seven weeks or something. Uh, you know, I mentioned a couple of o Obama's things. How about all the drone warfare? How about invading several new countries? How about um, making the Bush tax cuts permanent? On and on and on. And, and every time he was confronted, it's the same thing of... Uh, well, the Republicans are so mean, you know, they, they just, they block everything and they, they made him do it. It's just like the fucking Bill Clinton thing that Sirota was, you know, giving, lending credence to. Um, but then when you put up an actual left-wing candidate, what happens? We saw what they did to Bernie Sanders twice. They couldn't stop attacking us ever, ever. So, listen, if you're going to listen to this channel, participate in this community, leave the Democratic Party at the door. We don't do the Democratic Party here, okay? Not in any way, shape, or form. They are irredeemable, unreformable, and all they will do is take your time, energy, money, and resources and lock it in their vault, and you will never see it again. And you will get some nice tweets from AOC and Ilhan Omar and the squad and David Sirota and all these other fucking people, Bernie Sanders. And that's all you will get is lip service, empty promises, dangling carrots, false hope. That's all you will get. That's all the Democrats will ever give you. Ever. They're never going to do anything else. Ever. Stop believing it. We need to dem-exit, recreate the Bernie moment outside the Democratic Party, fight for socialism. I'm doing what I'm doing here on this channel. I don't have that much reach. I don't know, you know how long this will ever take to build. I kind of think the United States is borderline hopeless, but I do what I, I do here anyway because, hey, prove me wrong. <laughs> Make me do it. And that's the video. Thanks to our current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen or just support us financially, you can go to patreon.com slash socialism for all and sign up for a monthly donation. You can also follow us at facebook.com slash socialism, the number for all used to have a page at for 
all and it got throttled to death by Zuck. Here on YouTube, please click the like button, subscribe button, and the notifications bell. Please leave a comment if you can, and please share our video wherever you're online, your Twitter feed, your Discord servers, Reddit subs, etc. All of that helps more people to see this content, whether it's in the YouTube algorithm or just posting it on other sites. All of that's helpful. All of you out there supporting and promoting this content makes it all go that much more smoothly. We need to end capitalism, normalize talking about socialism today, and uh, it's really kind of our only hope for a better tomorrow. Thanks for all you do, and we will catch you in the next video.